Well, it's Steve Jackson again with Imprintables Warehouse. I'm here with Bob McCormick, and we're going to continue on with the project, and Bob's got some questions for me, and it's going to be a little bit of dialogue going along with the project. So, Bob, you want to do what with this? Well, I want the overall print to be like 10 by 10. Okay. So we're looking to resize the print to 10 by 10, and right now the graphic that we have, if I click on it, and I had grouped things together before when we were done with the last video. If I ungroup it, now I've got my just my cut line there I'll put that back and I had the bitmap underneath I, if I click outside of here I've got that bitmap that I'm dragging around but to be able to resize everything together there's two things that we need to look at because the outline of the graphic right here we can see is 12.441 by 11.45 but the the bitmap has a bit of area around it that's just dead space in there so let's do this we'll go to view and we're going to go to wireframe and that allows us to see the bitmap in kind of a box there. I'll hit F4, F4 zooms me in, and actually it's not far off. You can see the tip right there is what's causing it there and over here, so we don't have too much of a buffer. If I did have a lot of buffer room around this, I could use the crop tool right over here, and I could crop in that bitmap, but it looks like it's pretty darn close, enough for us on this project, I think. So I won't do anything with that, but what I'll do is I'll use my select tool right here, the pick tool, and I'll draw a marquee around it and select everything, or I could have hit Control and A, that selects everything, and, and in my object manager, you see that both items are selected here. So visually, I can see a couple different ways, two objects selected down here. There's more than one way to do this. I'm gonna group these. So I hit Control and U, or I'm sorry, Control and G, and now you see that there are a group of two objects over here, and then down here it says group of two objects, and if I move these guys around, they're together, cool. so that they're kinda held together. If I press P, that puts everything to the center of the page for me and makes my life a little bit easier to work with. Overall size of this, we wanted to be about 10, 10 inches. By 10, 10 by 10. So what I'll do with the, te with the text. With the text. So right now we'll just make this 10 by 10. We'll, we'll take it down and I've got my proportional lock ratio right there. I'm going to do 10 because that's my, my biggest constraining. And then I, it looks like it's 9 inches tall, so I've got another inch to work with down there. So we're doing good so far. We'll move this up a little bit. I'll hold the shift key as I move it up to keep it in a line. And we're going to add some boxes down below this. Hey, hand me the... Bob's got a graphic here. It's got some rounded circles around it. We're going to re recreate this guy here for you. I think that's going to be a little bit easier for us. So what he's got is he's got a couple ovals that go around the, the eagle here, and then a box down below that says Proud to be American with a couple different contour lines around it. So let's create the box. We're going to draw a banner box down here, something like this. And I will center that. I've got this here. I hold shift and select my upper one. I've got a whole line and distribute item here that I can do, that I can do all the different kinds of centering and everything. Or I can go to arrange and I can look under my line and distribute here. And I've got all these shortcut keys. Notice shortcut keys again and again. I keep coming back to this. I'll align the centers vertically so I know those are up and down vertical to each other. The graphics got a little in on the inside here to draw it in on that little banner. So what we're going to do is take the banner here. I'm going to right click and convert it to curves. And I'll find a midpoint in here. I'm going to add a, a little, little dot in the midpoint. Let's take a look actually. Uh, make this a little bit more precise for everybody. Right now this object is 3.48. Let's make that 4 inches tall. I'm going to unlock it and I'll make it, uh, we'll do 3.6. So now I know I've got an easy number to work with. Is uh, 3 would be 1.5 and, and then I take the 0.6 and divide that in 2 so I've got 1.8 down. I'll take this guy here, I'll hit control C, control V, and on the second one, I'm going to make it instead of 3.6, I'll make it 1.8. So now what I can do is use that to figure out my center line on this. I'll hold shift and select both boxes, and I'll hit B for bottom, so they're aligned to the bottom. So now I know exactly where that midpoint's going to be on the two here. I'll grab my outer box here, do my little pick tool or my shape tool, and I can add a node right here. And I'll zoom out and go to the other side, add a node right here, and now I know those two nodes are pretty well lined up on that. I can delete the bottom box, I don't need that anymore. Take my upper box and I'll bring this in just a little bit here, bring this guy in a bit right there, and I've got a neat little banner that's pretty close to what he's got on his graphic here. 
It's got several different colors. It's got a red outline on it, which I'm going to combine with. Uh, he's got an oval up top that needs to be combined with it. So we're not quite to doing our, our outlines and working with that there. We'll take the, the circle tool here and we'll make a circle, make an oval with it, something like that. Put that to the center of the page and then I can now, while holding my shift key with it selected, I can bring it up so it's where I want and I'll expand it out so it encompasses everything. A little too far out on the sides I think so we'll bring those in a bit. And up at the top it actually is down behind the eagle a little bit so let's hold the shift key and bring this guy down a bit. It's just about touching the head, and we need to bring in the sides a bit on it. It's a little bit flatter than that, wouldn't you say, Bob? So we'll make yeah. it flatter, and then we'll bring this upper portion up here. And zoom in a bit so I've got a bit more control. It's a lot easier when I'm looking at it, and the, the eagle on his other graphic is smaller. Yeah. So we can take this eagle here, the whole graphic there, and I'll make it a bit smaller. That's a bit better, I think, in proportion to what he's got before. And we're going to, in the new graphic, we're going to tuck some of it behind, and bring it down a bit. We're going to tuck those feathers so they're down behind a bit. So bring it up right about there. And that looks pretty good to me. How about you, Bob? It's good. Moving along, all right. So we've got these two portions here, and it's got a couple different variances to it. It's got an oval on the inside that's a different color. So we'll take this oval here. I'm going to control C, control V, and then I'm going to shift and bring it in, but it's offset from the top one. So I'll bring it down so it's offset. It's got the, a difference in outline there. I'm happy with that one. This outer one now I can take and use to create a single object that's similar to the graphic he has. We'll take this and I think this bottom banner is actually a little too big. It's a little, yeah, yeah it's a little, little high. Yeah, it's a little. So we'll take that and we'll bring it up in a little bit like that. That's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And we'll bring it up into the graphic there so it's fitting nicely. All right, so we'll take this top one here, the circle, and this one here, and we're going to weld them together. And now we've got that outer portion that's just perfect, so it looks just like the graphic that he has in front of him. So, so far so good. We've got these two. Let's get a little of that little notification there. We don't need that. Um, and now we need to do some contours with this. He has two different colors here. It's blue on the inside of this portion, and then it's got a red outer line on it. So instead of going through a whole bunch of hubble of trying to recreate it and everything, I'm just going to simply take it, use my contour tool, and I'll go to the outside. And I definitely need to be bigger than that on it. So we'll put 0.1 and we'll see where that falls. I'm going to change the outline color to something I can see. Um, a little bit thicker than that, wouldn't you say, Bob? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit thicker than that, so we'll, we'll dump it out to a 1.5 maybe. Something like that there. looks nice. And it actually looks like it's a little bit different on the oval and the rest of it there. So maybe what we'll do is we'll take that once we break it apart and we'll shift it a little bit so we can kind of work with the graphic. But for right now, I'm happy with it. Again, my shortcut key, control K, or I could have gone to range and break apart. But now I've got two different objects. This one here... I can look at my, my layer and see which one's on top of which. That one's on top of the red, so I'm happy. I'll fill that one with blue. And then the red one here, I'll fill with a red. We're just using some RGB colors. So I've got it kind of where we wanted. It looks like this is a little bit thinner on the other one, but we can play around with that later. I don't want any outlines on these. It kind of distracts from them. So I'll right click on the little box that has nothing in it, and that'll get rid of my outlines. Still got my eagle in the background there, but even though he's not showing out, he's there. I could bring him to the front of the page if I wanted to, but it's going to clip things, so we'll, we'll leave him. We know he, he's in there. This inner circle here is a white one, so we'll fill that with white, no outline, and then we'll play around with it because it's, it's not quite where I want it on there. It doesn't look quite right, so I'll bring it up a little bit maybe. Actually, let's, let's shift and bring it out a bit. Oops, holding the wrong thing. Shift, and we'll bring it out a little bit. That looks a little bit more like the graphic mm -hmm. that you have to me. So that one's nice on there. So we've got the round on there. We've got our eagle in the background, and we'll play around with layering on him a little bit later. And then we have um, a couple more things to do. 
And actually, looking at his graphic, I should have done things a little bit differently. So I'm going to hit Control-Z a few times. We made a mistake here. And hopefully I've got enough leeway to do that. I don't. All right. So, uh, unfortunately, I made a mistake there, and I, I need to kind of recreate it. I, he has an offset box on the inside of here that's a white line in it, which would have been nice to contour on that before I welded those two together and be able to make that. But that's all right. What we'll do is we'll create another box. We'll go from the node right there down to the node here because everybody makes mistakes from time to time, right? We're going to go ahead and right-click on that guy, and we'll convert it to curves. Actually, I right-clicked on the elbow and converted curves. That was fine, though. Right-click, convert to curves, or Control-Q, our shortcuts. Now, I'll zoom in on this guy. I'll hit my zoom key so I can bring these in. What I want to do is bring a node on that to right in there. So we'll go to our shape tool. We'll add a node, and then I can drag that guy and see how it matched right up with it. And I can even, I can see this node's off a little bit right here. I'll drag it in so it's matching up with that. But that's a lot easier than trying to redraw it there. We can get close to it, and, and then we've got a snap to on the nodes that allows me to snap right into it. That guy looks like it's right on. I'll use my zoom key, hit Z for zoom. Zoom on this guy, it's right on. We'll go up just a little bit, back to our shape tool. Add a node and bring it over so it's matching right there. So now I've got a box that's just the same as that there, and that box is contoured in. Uh, it looks like about, what, a quarter of an inch on this. So we'll go to our contour tool. We're going to go to the inside, and we'll up that to 0.25. There it is. And there's the line that we wanted. Again, our shortcut key of Control-K. We'll break it apart. So we've got this. I don't need that outer box right there. We'll get rid of that one. This one here is white in the graphic, so I can take that one and I'll right click and make it white. And we can thicken up that line because this isn't a cut line or anything mm -hmm. that affects anything else. So we'll take it and we'll make it like a. I uh, have to look at the graphic as we go along. That's a little too big, I think. That's teeny bit. So we'll go somewhere. That looks pretty good to me right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've got that there. We've got our blue. We've got our red. We'll make this one white again. And I think we're, we need to move it a little bit down there, and we, we kind of shifted it out, didn't we, before? Somewhere about there? Looks good. Okay. Now this is going to be trimmed out of that portion up there. We need a line going across that trims this out. So here's an easy way to do a line to trim it across. Again, I'll use my box. I'll go from the edge here to the edge there. I've got a box there. I'll select that, hold shift, and select this other one, and I'll use my trim tool. Now I've got that oval all trimmed up where I wanted it to, and it matches up nicely. So we've got the outlines going on here. We've got some nice colors in there. He's got one more banner down at the bottom that intersects with everything. It says, proud to be a teamster. So what we'll do with that guy there is let's make another box down here. And it goes up into it. It almost starts right on the edge here. It goes across to there. We'll center that up with everything. We'll select the two and hit center, for C for center. We'll take this, and on this one, I'm going to use my envelope tool to make it swoop up. It's got kind of a, a, yeah, a bridge. A bridge, exactly. Thank you. Great word for it, okay? So we'll use the bridge tool. I'm going to go over to my tools here, use the envelope, and I've got these two dots here. You see you've got all sorts of options, a straight line mode or single arc mode or double arc. We're going to use single arc mode on this. I'm going to hold down the control key, and I'll pull up on it and see how it makes a nice little bridge, nice and smooth there, and keeps everything in line. If I'd done that, let's hit Control Z and go back again to single arc mode, and I hold the Shift key and pull out. You see how it brings them out proportional to each right. other. Notice when I hit Control Z, it always goes back to just the unconstrained mode. So I want to click back to my my single arc mode, hold the Control, nice little arc above there. It's a thicker line that goes around this whole thing. It's it's got kind of an outline to it, and it's a white center. So we'll give it a white center so it blocks in there. I'm going to go to my, my outline tool here instead of hairline. I'm going to drop it down. It was fairly thick. Um, a little thicker than that, I think. So we'll go to 0.125, maybe thicker. 0.25. That's too thick. So we'll go to 0.125. I think that, that looks good. fine. And it's the same color blue as the rest of it. And it doesn't... I'm going to peel back its graphic here and take a look and see if it's got a red line going around that. 
it doesn't. It's, it's just a, a, a blue line all the way. So on this one, I can right click on my blue and that matches up with the blue on the rest of it. Something to note here though, that this graphic right now, that's an outline. Outlines are just sort of like contour lines and things like that in that they're a property of. We can physically see that that's got a width to it, but if I go to wireframe, you'll see real quick that there's no width whatsoever to that. So what we have to do is we have to convert that outline to an object. And to do that, I go to arrange and convert outline to object, or as you've heard me say throughout the whole thing, shortcut keys, control shift Q. When I do that, you can see now that outline is an object. I don't need this inner line right here. I could get rid of it. Let's go back to our other view. I hit delete on that, it goes away, but what happened, you see real quick, is it got rid of my color in there. It's not hurting anything where it's at. We can leave it right there. So. Right now we're looking at it, it looks pretty close to what you have on the other graphic. I can take my, my bird here and I will bring him up. I'll He's all the way down on the bottom there so I could drag it up to the top. You're going to see real quick, there he is on there. Remember we've got our cut line on this whole thing so we're, we're going to be adjusting that cut line again. Ah, yeah, because the cut line is now... It, it would be cutting all that stuff. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what I can also do is I can play with around with arranging things. I could make another box here that goes across this that'll cut out the bird right there so it looks like those are draping behind. But in his graphic, he has the feathers going in the front. Yeah, I think that's the way they saw yeah. it. So. so we're going to right click on this and we're going to ungroup it. I don't need that cut line anymore. So I'll get rid of that. So now we've got the graphic fairly close to what they've got on here. Because it's, it's inside the... Uh, yeah, Bob is noticing that it was inside of everything in there and it would have made so a disaster so cutting this thing. Cut. Not on this one, but no, if, if, you you just wanted if, the, if you just wanted the eagle, then that's it that's would have been perfect. done. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is he's well, got... How did you get rid of the cut line on the eagle? He's asking how we got rid of the cut line. Remember, they were grouped together. And you can see that they're ungrouped right here. I'll go back one more step. It was a group of two objects. Right. So if I move these guys around, they're going together. See it, right. So I right clicked on it and hit ungroup, or I could have hit control U. Okay. And now they're two different objects. I can click outside of that, so nothing's selected. I can either click just the curve right here. So if I move that around, I've just got my cut line curve there. Right. And I can hit delete. But now, we need the cut line. We need the cut line on the right. top. That's <laughs> just, thank you. I was just about to point that out. So let's leave that guy for right now. We can even take that and we can put it to the bottom of the entire layer. Let's just take that down and put it way to the bottom. Oops. I did something I wasn't supposed to. Easier way to put that down to the bottom of the layers, hit shift and page down. And you'll see it's all the way down at the bottom. So if I zoom in on it, you don't even see it in there because it's down below even this photograph. Okay? So we might want it up above the photograph, actually. We'll, we'll leave it. We'll come back to it. We, we've got it there. Uh, I'll leave it on the top layer because we're going to do that, that line around objects right. again when we're done with all this. Okay? Oh, okay. So what we've got here, um, and we're going to have to hide the bird for a little bit when we do that because it'll, if I look at this in wireframe, where's the edge is it would find when it does that around objects, but mm -hmm. we'll get to that. Let's finish up the rest of the graphic here. We've got some lettering to put in here and some lettering to put in there. We've got proud to be an American, so we'll just take any kind of font in here and we're going to type it in here. Proud to be an American. And it looks like it's a serif font, so we'll take a quick look through the fonts and pick something that's somewhat close. You can adjust this to whatever you want as you go along. We'll pick out, um, no, athletics aren't going to do it, I don't think. We'll do Badan EMT right there. That looks good. Okay, so we'll take this. I can bring it down, and I can hold shift with those two and center it. And then I can take this proud to be American, and I can stretch it out. It looks like it's taller in the graphics, so once I've stretched it out side to side there, I'll grab this top node here and stretch it to be a little taller. That looks pretty good right there. And it's white on this graphic, so we'll make it white here with no outline. That looks pretty sharp right there, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then he's got another little bit in there that this says, proud to be, be a teamster. It's going to be carpenter. It's proud to be a carpenter, okay. So let's take that there. We're going to move this down a little bit so I can type it here. Oh, proud to be a... Uh, he's got it all upper and lowercase on this one, so it's oh, a little bit I didn't different. I realize that, yeah. It's important to check that stuff. <laughs> wow, I'm, my, my typing bad. skills are horrible. <laughs> oh, it's Carpenter, right? Yep. There we go. Proud to be a Carpenter. 
We'll select that whole item there, and we're going to match the font to that Badani MT. And this one is the same color as the rest of the blue, so we're going to make it blue and no outline on it. And we'll bring that up, shift and center it to this thing and center into there. And now I, I want this to go along the curve of everything. So I could do it a couple different ways. I could still do that envelope tool on this. I'd have to convert it. Or you can take, there's another trick you can do and go text and fit text to path. And when I tell it the path here, it's giving me a tough time because there's a lot of lines in there. So that's a tough one to do. So instead of doing that, oops, I'll hit escape on that. Instead of doing that, I'm gonna size this in here. We'll zoom it up. I think it's a little thicker of a font in what he's got, so I like that a bit better. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of zooming all over here. This is a little bit of a mess, so let's zoom into the section we really want here. So I've got Proud to be a Carpenter there. I'm going to expand this out a bit so it fits in. Proud to be a Carpenter. It looks pretty decent. We'll make it a little bit taller. And now I'm going to use the same envelope tool, but when you've got a font, you've got to convert it to curves first. Because okay. it won't let you, you do that with the envelope tool. I'll do my envelope again, my single arc, hold down my control key, and curve it up to match that one there. Once I've got it where I want, I just lower it down until it's in the center there. And now we've got our graphics set up. Look pretty good to you, Bob? Looks good to me. Uh, that's what they're looking for. Now the last thing that we have to do here is we've got that bird there. And remember in the background, that's a bitmap. We need to do a cut line around all of this here. If I look at this in wireframe, I'm going to end up with a line right there. So let's try it. I'll show you what I mean. If I'm going to bring this and do that whole trick of select everything and then draw a boundary around it, it'll do that boundary, but look at my boundary up in here. It's going around that other object, so it's messing things up. So here's what we're going to do. I grab my bird. I can see I got my artwork right there. I'm going to cut it out. Cutting it out using Control X or Cut will remove that bird, but it's on the clipboard, so I can paste it back in when I'm all done with this. I've got my cut line that we created earlier right here, so now I'll do my line around everything, create the boundary around. It's all done. Let's double check it. Is it where I want it? It sure is. It looks good right there. I'll put that back. Okay, so that's where I want it. I'll take the bird inside of here, and I'll delete that line, and I'll hit Control V or Paste, and there's my graphic back. I'll grab my outer outline here that's my cut line. It's not a cut color yet, and since I've got two different colors, I've got a red here and a blue there, and I've got some up on top here, let's bring it in. We'll contour it in again, so I'll have a nice bleed line created around the whole object, because I've got different colors that I'm working with. So I'll go back to my contour tool over here. you got to hit the little triangle there and go to contour. We'll go to the inside, and not 0.25, that's a little extreme. I think we were 0 0.03 before. And hit enter, and we'll zoom in on this and see where that line went. Um, not enough, I think. Or it's not showing up for some reason. There's a contour group there, but it's not showing up the way I want it to for some reason. So let's, um, let's move that aside and see what's going on. It did a contour, but it just wasn't showing it very well. Oh, because it was red right in there. Okay, so it was showing on red against red. Oh, okay, so the so actual... maybe if I zoom down in there and it's below the art, it's below the artwork, so it wasn't showing up there. So that artwork there, we want this curve to be above that. So now when I zoom in, we can see it above it, and we didn't see it before because ah. it was red to match that. So we'll take this contour and we're going to lessen that. We're going to bring it in a bit to about a point zero two point zero three, I think, is what we had before. Um, and that'll be nice. We'll take a look at it. I can zoom down on here, and you can see that cut line in there. Uh -huh. So now we'll take that whole thing, and we're going to Control-K, break it apart. I don't need the original curve around it. This outer curve here now, I can right-click and make that cut color. And when we zoom in, I can see my nice cut contour line all the way around it. But it's, it's chopping this off here? It is chopping that off there. It's going to be a little smoother, so they're not necessarily going to see yeah. that. But yeah. unless they're super picky about that one, I doubt that they're going to notice it. But we've got a perfect contour line around the entire object, and it's going to go into a bleed zone on it. So there we've got a, a finished project. We now, used a couple different tools there. Now, how big is the actual size? Actual size. He's looking for actual size of the whole project. Let's take the entire project here, and I'm going to hold shift and get rid of that artwork and that, that whole piece there. So I, I want the curve here, 
and then I can hit, hit control as I go through all this different stuff. Or better yet, I'll select everything, and while holding the shift key down, I'll click on, eh, it's not letting me do it. Let's try select everything here, hold the control key, and get rid of the artwork, because the artwork, remember, extended past it. Oh, okay. okay. So our whole size there is 13.29 by 9.77. He wanted it closer to 10 on the widths, so let's take the whole thing, and the width isn't going to be affected there, so we'll make our width 10%, but I need to lock the ratio to keep everything right. We'll do 10 inches there. And it's going to be 10 by seven and a half. 10 by, 10 by eight, basically. Yeah, that's that's not a bad graphic at all for the front of a shirt, or you're doing this on the back of a shirt. I don't know what they're doing it on yet, to be honest. And you could redo it on uh, the left chest or something like that. This design isn't too crucial for that either. You could do a left chest with that too. So, we got our whole design resaved. And the crucial, most important part to everything is save your work. Corel will save it, Autumn save it at different points as you set up in your defaults, but we want to make sure that we save our artwork now when we're all done, or else we'll lose it, potentially, <laughs> and then you got to recreate everything. you got a nice video to go from, but nice. that's not going to help you out too much, so we'll just pop this on the desktop and we'll call it KM Eagle Design. And later on, he could come back in here and edit this. If he's got somebody that comes through and say, now it's not the carpenters, it's going to be the uh, proud to be a welder. He could come back in and take this proud to be a carpenter part, delete it, Retype put it. proud to be a, a welder, and go right from there. We use the same exact font as this font right here, so he can go back and see what the font was and work right with that. So we've got it all saved and ready to go. Looking good, Bob? Looks good to me. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and hopefully you learned a little bit from it.